Hi, I'm Gil Welch. In this short take, I'm going to take on lead time bias. One of the reasons why survival always rises following early detection. Let's start by defining survival. It's the period of time between diagnosis and death. That's survival time. It might be measured in years, it might be measured in months. Now I'll cut to the chase. This short take is going to encourage you to think of hard about this question. What does longer survival mean? We assume it means delayed death, but in fact it may just mean earlier diagnosis. Let's talk about the statistics we use to measure survival. One is median survival. It addresses the question, how long does the typical patient live? Literally, the middle value. And then there's five-year survival and ten-year survival. Their proportions. They each have a numerator and denominator. The denominator of five-year survival is cancer patients alive five years after diagnosis. The denominator is all cancer patients. So five-year survival can be interpreted as the proportion of patients surviving five years from diagnosis. Ten-year survival is very similar, except the numerator is now cancer patients alive ten years after diagnosis. So it's interpreted as the proportion of patients surviving ten years following diagnosis. Now survival is always misleading in assessing the value of early detection. Let me give you a couple of common settings. The first is comparing patients who are diagnosed late with patients who are diagnosed early. Now if they're followed forward in time and you measure median survival or five or ten year survival, survival is misleading. Of course patients diagnosed early survive longer. Epidemiologists would say survival is biased. Biased means misleading. Here's another common setting. Comparing patients who are diagnosed clinically, those who have symptoms, with patients who are diagnosed using advanced imaging, things like CTs, MRIs, etc. You follow them forward in time, you measure median or five or ten year survival, survival is biased. Here's a third setting. Comparing patients diagnosed in the past, say 1980, with patients diagnosed more recently, say 2000, when there's a lot more advanced diagnostic imaging going on. Well, if we measure survival, survival will be biased. And then finally, think about international comparisons. Comparing patients who are diagnosed in Europe, for example, with those diagnosed in the United States, where there's just a lot of cross-sectional imaging, a lot of advanced diagnostic technology, a lot of early diagnosis. If we compare median survival or five or ten year survival, survival is biased. Why is survival biased by early detection? Well, there are two reasons. The first is lead time bias. The second is overdiagnosis bias. That's a topic for another short take. Here we're talking about lead time bias. Before we can talk about lead time bias, however, we need to talk about lead time. To think about lead time, let's think about the entire lifespan from birth to death. And we'll put some ages on it. You're born at age zero, let's say you die at age 75. And we'll talk about it in the context of cancer and say a cancer starts to develop at age 50. Now, of course, this is the period we're really interested in. So let's focus on that period from age 50 to age 75. Let's say the cancer causes symptoms at age 70. It's clinically detected at that point. Now, the time between when the cancer starts to develop and it causes symptoms is called the preclinical phase. This is the period in which screening has the opportunity to catch cancer early. 
So now let's screen this patient. And let's say screen detection occurs at age 65. That period between age 65 and age 70 is the lead time. In this example, the lead time is five years. Now note, for a screening test to work, it must cause patients to be diagnosed earlier than they would be otherwise. In other words, a screening test must introduce lead time. Lead time is a good thing. But the minute you introduce lead time, you also introduce a lead time bias. How lead time bias increases survival even if there's been no prolongation in life? Imagine the setting without screening. Patient dead at 75, he or she is diagnosed at age 70. What's that patient's survival? Their survival time is five years. Now with screening, same patient, still dead at age 75, is diagnosed at age 65. What's that patient's survival time? It's 10 years. But nothing's really changed. The patient is still dying at age 75. All that's changed is the time of diagnosis. Now imagine how this plays out in a group of patients. Here are 10 patients with clinically diagnosed with cancer. This patient is diagnosed and lives eight years before he or she dies. This patient is diagnosed and dies 2.5 years later. This patient is diagnosed and di dies four years later, and so on and so forth. Each arrow represents one patient. Now what's the five-year survival of this group of patients? Well, the challenge here is simply to recognize which arrows are longer than five years. Well, there are three of them. So the five-year survival will be those three patients over the total number of arrows are 10, 30 percent. Now let's take these same patients and give them each a two-year leading time. Imagine now they've all been detected by screening. The eight-year patient all of a sudden appears to survive 10 years because we've advanced their time of diagnosis. The patient who had survived 2.5 years now will survive 4.5 years. The third patient was at four years, will now be at six years, and so on and so forth. In each case, we're adding a two-year lead time because of early detection. Now, what's the five-year survival? Well, now there are a lot of arrows longer than five years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five-year survival is 7 over 10, or 70%. Pretty powerful effect. Nothing's changed about the timing of death. Survival always rises with earlier detection. Survival will rise if cancer mortality falls. Survival will rise if cancer mortality is unchanged. And survival will rise if cancer mortality rises. In fact, survival is rising for all cancers in the United States, even those whose mortality rates are going up. Survival always exaggerates the benefit of cancer screening. Why is survival bias by early detection? Lead time bias overdiagnosis bias. Topic for another day. As you think about lead time bias, I just want you to always come back to this question. What does longer survival mean? We assume it means delayed death. But instead, it may just mean earlier diagnosis. Well, that's it. I'm done. You're done.